We're at um, Matthew 4, 23 to 25. Over to you, Emmanuel. Yeah, so going back on what Gary was saying, uh, the gospel, and I like what you said, it's not the whole Bible. The whole Bible is not what is called the gospel. I mean, the whole Bible is the scripture. And uh, the scripture says every verse or all word of God is profitable to man. But when it comes to the salvation of man, it's not just the whole scripture. There is a portion of the scripture that Gary was referring to, which is called the gospel. And when he read from Romans chapter 1, somewhere verse 16, where it says, it is the power of God unto salvation which means you can have the whole scripture in your hands, but the only part that can actually take you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, into the kingdom of light, is the portion that is called the gospel. Now, that is not hidden. Gospel is just a name that was used in the ancient English language. It simply means almost too good to be true news and which part of the bible is almost too good to be true certainly not isaiah chapter 59 which says uh, god's hand is not short to reach you but your sins have separated you from him so far away that he cannot reach you that is certainly not good news the good news is that even though your sins have separated you from god god did not look at that sin he paid it all through the blood of Jesus Christ and now is offering it to you for free. That's what makes it too good to be true news, almost too good to be true news. And that portion of the scripture is what is termed the gospel. And it means, like Gary was saying, you have to study to show yourself approved. You cannot just globally read the whole Bible and grab the gospel. If you don't have the right teachers or Bible study like we are doing to direct a new Christian or a new believer or even an unbeliever to the right portion of the Bible, we can lead him to what is called the gospel. They cannot be saved because it is the only power God has unto salvation to everyone who believes, which means the rest of the scripture said doesn't have that much power to save you as the gospel does. And that's why it's important for studies like this and uh, the right kind of church to go to. The fact that you just walk into a place where the name of Jesus is called doesn't make it a church because you could be there for 20 years and never even hear the gospel. That's right. But it is important for our viewers, and we know we have an audience all over the continents, and most certainly these things will continue playing over and over throughout history. Everyone who comes across this video should know that it's important to identify what is the gospel. Christ died for our sins, and that payment was given to us for free. It is a gift. That's why we cannot earn it. That's wow. my little two cents over there. Oh, wow, yeah. that so, was enormously powerful. Yes. Thank you yes. so much, Emmanuel. Thank you. Very, very good. Uh, and now for you guys out there in the third dimension, we're going back to Emmanuel and he's going to offer you an invitation to respond mm -hmm. to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So just what you've been hearing from all the ministers. Mm -hmm. Over to you, please, Emmanuel. Yes, so when it comes to the salvation that we were talking about, you see, if it is the first step into getting into the body of Christ. When you receive Jesus Christ and, you know, there is the gospel for Christians and there is the gospel for unbelievers. This is a little bit controversial, but what I mean is you don't get saved two times. When you get saved one time, you are in the body of Christ. The rest of it becomes the discipleship, like what we are doing now. So I'm going to lead you through getting into the body of Christ, and you will be in the body. You can't get out of it. The devil can't get you out of it. You are buried inside 
the Holy Spirit inside Jesus and inside God is too far away for anybody to grab you out and pull you out unless you renounce it yourself. But even that, you are too young to be able to do that. It takes a very matured Christian to be able to renounce their faith. So what I'm saying is that when I lead you into getting into the body of Christ, it is something that is treasured. You should keep it all the time in your mind that nobody can get you out of it. That takes you out of that religious re repetition of trying to do good to please God. Because the whole thing is the gospel. The gospel is that you don't have to do anything. Everything has been done for you by Jesus Christ. And that's why you have to take that Jesus Christ as your Lord or as the one who did or who walked the way for you. Now, when you understand it like that, it is easy to get you to believe. If you understand that Jesus has already done the work for you, because many a times I myself went over and over to the altar to repeat the salvation, the sinner's prayer. But the reason I went over and over is that I did not understand what had been done for me. Mm. I had been told that I can come in and say, Jesus is my Lord and I'm saved. But the moment I walked away, I knew it didn't work. The reason it didn't work is that I did not understand the gospel. The good news is what saves you. Then when you hear the good news, Romans chapter 10, verse, I'll read from verse 7. I'll read from verse 6. It says, but the righteousness which is of faith speaks in, on this wise. Don't say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down because he has already come. Don't say who shall go into the deep to bring him back from the dead because he's already risen. But what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, which means we have to get you to hear the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. When we explain what the good news is and you hear it, now it will be in your mouth and in your heart and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when you hear the good news and you speak it out of your mouth, that's what brings salvation. When it, when it, be, it becomes life, it forms life within you and then you can't help but let it come out of your mouth. So it is important for any of our viewers to go over this program again and hear the fact that Jesus died for your sin. That is the word you need to know. Jesus paid it all. That is the word you need to know. He is never going to count your sins against you. That's the word you need to know. And over and over, I can go. I can go over and over. And when you understand that, it brings faith. Then it comes out of your mouth. And after you've done all of those and you understand, now it won't be just repeating after somebody, but it will be your confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ who has done this work for you. So if you have understood it to that point, then repeat this with me. If you have not, this is electronic. You can rewind and go back and hear it over and over again. But when you get to the point where you have understood it, you have understood the good news coming out of your mouth is what seals it. And then you will be snatched from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's uh, dear son, which is Jesus Christ. And all of us here, you see the smiles on our faces? That is because we are born again. And that's exactly what we are telling you, the roadmap to getting born again. And so I'm insisting on the fact that understand that if you are one of those who have repeated over and over the sinner's prayer and you still don't see it working, it's because it comes with the understanding. Faith comes by hearing. When you have heard the good news of the fact that Jesus has already paid for you and you God is not mad at you. How else should I say it? 
just come close to him. And when you hear the good news coming out of your mouth is what will seal it. So if you are at that point, please repeat verse 9 with me. It says that if anyone shall say with their mouth, the Lord Jesus. So you will have to say it too. If you are hearing me, please say it with your mouth. The, the, Jesus is my Lord or the Lord Jesus. And then the next part says that, and if you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. Does it make sense? It is so clear. The reason I did it over and over and it never worked is because I did not understand the gospel, the good news. I repeated the prayer, but it didn't work for me. Or maybe it worked, but I wasn't sure. There was no assurance. That's why I had to keep going. <laughs> I had said to myself, I will not miss heaven. I will go to heaven. I cry. I go. They say, oh, you are saved. I go home. Tomorrow, I come back. I wanted to be sure. But as soon as I understood the gospel, I never went back to the altar to pray the sinner's prayer again. And if that is your case, just know that you are saved for repeating with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and for believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe, trust that God sees your heart. He knows it. He saw it. He heard you with, your, with his ears. He heard you and you are saved. Walk in confidence in this world. Nobody can take your salvation from you. Thank you.